a walk along Velikotarnovo's Craft Street reveals a thriving folk culture with opportunities to watch artisans at work. Rumi carves with a keen eye. Roshko paints icons with a delicate touch. Nina skillfully turns clay into art. Meanwhile, her son finishes each piece with patterns that go back centuries. Todor, the silversmith, with his strong hands and distinctive technique, transforms strips and strands of metal into exquisite jewelry. Delftware is famous all around the world. Royal Delft, the oldest surviving workshop established back in the 1600s, welcomes visitors to drop in and see how it's made. Visitors to the factory follow the process. First, the liquid clay is poured into plaster molds. When dry, it's removed and the seams are smoothed off. Then it's baked. And then, lovingly painted by hand. A mesmerizing scene, unchanged for centuries. After being glazed to fix the paint, it's baked a second time, during which the paint turns blue. That's the secret of Royal Delft Blue since 1653. The finished product? This highly valued earthenware. Rooms of historic Delftware show off this art. This table setting is laid out as if it was the home of a wealthy person here in Delft. Speyside marks the heart of Scotland's whiskey country. It's practically a pilgrimage for aficionados of Scotch whiskey. Of the hundred or so whiskey distilleries in Scotland, about half lie near the valley of the River Spey. Its prized waters, along with a favorable climate and soil for barley, have attracted distillers here for centuries. Along with natural resources, a critical element in the scotch making process is quality barrels. The Speyside Cooperage welcomes visitors with guided tours. From an observation deck, you'll watch master coopers making casks for distilleries throughout Scotland. Perhaps the single biggest factor in defining whiskey's unique flavor is the barrel it's aged in. The process is essentially the same today as it was centuries ago. In order to be watertight, the oak staves are lassoed tightly by metal hoops. Tight-fitting lids are banged into place and sealed with a caulking of freshwater reeds. Finally, the inside is artfully charred creating a carbonized coating that helps give whiskey its golden hue and flavor. The United States actually contributes to the character of Scotch whiskey because most of the barrels used in Scotland are made from the staves of hand-me-down bourbon casks from Kentucky. It's impressive to watch the Coopers, who are paid by the piece, work with such intensity and focus. There's much more to this town than tourism, as you'll quickly find in the characteristic back lanes of the Ultrarno district. Artisans busy at work offer a rare opportunity to see traditional craftsmanship in action. You're welcome to just drop into little shops, but remember, it's polite to greet the proprietor. Your key phrase is, can I take a look? Posso guardare? Certo, grazie. Here in this great city of art, there's no shortage of treasures in need of a little TLC. How old is this painting? Uh, this is a 17th century painting. From uh, Florence? Mm, we, we don't know, maybe the area is Genova. Genova. Each shop addresses a need with passion and expertise. Fine instruments deserve the finest care. Grand palaces sparkle with gold leaf, thanks to the delicate and exacting skills of craftspeople like this. Next stop is Murano.
Venice is famous for its glass, for centuries blown here on the island of Murano. A 13th century law restricted the dangerous glass furnaces to Murano to prevent fires on the main island and also to protect the secrets of Venetian glassmaking, historically vital to the local economy. Today, glass is still big business as tourists come here in droves. While savvy shoppers know that cheap knickknacks are most likely from China, the venerable art form is alive and well, as you'll see in some of the elaborate showrooms. You can witness the traditional mastery of this craft in adjoining workshops, which welcome the public. These artisans are from families of glassblowers which go back many generations. Our next lagoon stop is Burano. Burano, with its pastel facades gracing the lagoon, was first a fishing town. Later, it thrived as a lace-making center. Today, it's popular with visitors for its gentle ambience and lace shops. Once sleepy, its main center is now crowded with tourists. Locals say anything with a door is a shop. Burano's lace-making heritage goes back 500 years. Shops proudly display these painstakingly produced works of art. Rather than using bobbins, women make Burano's beautiful lace with only needles and thread. Meticulously following time-honored patterns, these traditions continue to be passed from older generations to the next. The art of mosaic making is still alive and well in Ravenna. Nearby, in the Coco Mosaic Workshop, works commissioned by an international clientele are being created. The process is much the same as in ancient Roman times. Minerals are baked into glass to make a rainbow of colors. The colored glass and gold leaf pieces are broken with a hammer, then artfully set in wet cement. The results are almost as beautiful today as they were in Justinian times, as the Ravenna tradition of fine mosaic work lives on to this day. 